So the next thing you can do about climate change is change the color of your house. Now I'm actually doing the exact opposite of the advice that I'm going to give you and I wish that I had had this advice eight years ago when I resided my house. So as you can see behind me my house is sided with hardy plank which is a concrete uh, board. Now the product itself is fairly good and I've done a, a video on that. Um, I'll put the link to this in the show notes below. Um, but it's a concrete board that will last a really long period of time. You can repaint it. Um, and so we ended up choosing what we thought was the aesthetic option for our house from a, a color perspective. And it does look really nice and I think it's added a lot of value to the house. However, the house itself is quite a dark color and it absorbs enormous amounts of thermal energy. A lot of roofs as well are quite dark and they'll also absorb a lot of thermal energy. So the, the tip is basically to choose light colors on your house if you want to help change the conversation um, or have an impact on climate change on the planet. So we've literally covered the planet with houses with dark roofs or even commercial buildings or industrial buildings with dark or black roofs. Um, we love dark colors on our buildings and these have very uh, absorptive surfaces. And so if you think about what was in the place of my house 150 years ago, it would have been native prairie, possibly some balsam poplar, um, but basically multi-speciated uh, biology essentially, mostly plants, that would have absorbed and put that energy to productive use. And we've gone and replaced it with inanimate objects that are dark colors that are going to absorb that thermal energy. Now, one house, no big deal. But when you start adding up millions of buildings and all of these dark surfaces, it absolutely starts to make a difference to the albedo of the planet. And so I have a client in uh, that I'm working for right now and she was really smart and she basically clad her entire house with white siding and white roof. And I think her house looks fantastic. I love the way that it detailed out. And the house itself has got hardy plank, so it's got that same durable fireproof finish. Um, but the house doesn't overheat because the roof and the siding are both white. Now, you don't have to go a stark white if you don't want. There's plenty of other light colors that will do a great job of reflecting heat back up into space, which is what we're trying to aim to do. Um, I can see a day in the future when, when land use bylaws are going to require that we use light roof surfaces. Now, one other benefit outside of the the climate change benefit we've talked about is that the, the house itself will stay cooler in the summertime. Another benefit is that if you're going to mount solar thermal panels up on the roof and you've got a white surface behind it, the roof is actually going to reflect energy back into the backside of the solar thermal collector, specifically on a tube collector. So you'll actually end up, by creating a reflective surface on that white roof, <coughs> you'll actually end up making the solar thermal panel more effective in doing so. So there's lots of benefits of using reflective surfaces in the way that we design our buildings. So if you found this interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel below. Hit the like button if you like this video. It helps the video to track. And make sure you check out our website at vergepermaculture.ca. We have a free introduction to permaculture. We talk about all of these types of things. Um, I'll put a link to the free course in the show notes, um, show notes below as well as a title card at the end of the video. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll see you on the next video where we're going to talk about the importance of setting up the right thermal energy systems for your house in order to make a dent on climate change.